Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Robert and this is another playthrough of Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game. Uh, this time we're continuing the castle campaign and this is scenario number 3, it's called Stadwick's Liberation. And uh, I want to point out uh, a couple of things, so in the previous playthrough of scenario number 2, it ended up in a loss. So I went ahead and played it off screen and uh, these are the cards that I'm carrying over uh, with uh, my hero. Okay. Uh, and uh, one uh, important correction, uh, which, uh, by the way, uh, later uh, while watching this video, make sure to check the pinned comment. I'll, I'll leave a pinned comment with any corrections that are pointed out, like I did for the previous two videos. So make sure to check the pinned comment that I'm going to leave for corrections. But one very important uh, thing uh, to know uh, from the previous video at the end, uh, in the last uh, battle, uh, when the AI ran out of cards, when I was fighting against the enemy hero, uh, when the AI deck runs out, uh, you're not supposed to reshuffle it. Uh, this is not mentioned anywhere in the rules, uh, and it wasn't even mentioned in the, uh, at the time, latest version of the uh, rulebook rewrite project, uh, okay? But uh, now we're at version 1.1 of the rulebook rewrite project. Uh, I'll leave a link, make sure you download that. And it does uh, finally mention uh, that uh, particularly the AI uh, deck uh, is not reshuffled. Once it runs out of cards, you don't draw from it anymore. And that really uh, makes it um, a lot less difficult uh, because uh, when you're fighting against the enemy hero, uh, you're gonna run out of cards by rounds, uh, by, by the end of round two or three probably and the enemy AI is just going to keep drawing cards and boosting their units, so that's a bit unfair. <laughs> so uh, I, I assume that when any deck runs out, you're supposed to reshuffle it. Uh, that's what I thought, but uh, in specifically with the AI deck, you're not supposed to reshuffle it. So just keep that in mind, okay? When fighting against enemy heroes, that is. So, uh, so I've set up uh, Stadwick, uh, Stadwick's Battalion, or not Battalion, Liberation, and uh, you start with the, that certain amount of resources. You start with a bit of um, uh, stone or building materials uh, production, and uh, also you get a bonus. Remember, you also uh, you don't get both the dif difficulty and the scenario bonuses. All right, you you skip the difficulty bonus. We're playing on hard, like we like we've been playing the past two scenarios, and for this scenario, I decided to go with the ten uh, gold uh, bonus. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's a few extra rules for this scenario for obelisks oh, and your hero starts at level two. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I'll leave you to read these when you do this scenario. I'll keep them in mind while uh, playing the scenario. Okay, but there's a couple extra rules there. And I've also set up a couple cubes here in the round tracker because there's a couple timed events. Okay, uh, there's a couple timed events for uh, fifth and eighth round. And the goal of the scenario is uh, I have to reach uh, the Dragon uh, Utopia, which is on this tile, and I need to uh, defeat the uh, enemy hero army there. Okay, and all the hero army specifications are here. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll bring out the enemy armies as uh, as needed. Okay, uh, and I and you do have to keep in mind that when you find a map tile with a settlement, there's an event that you have to ring. Okay, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, and uh, as I said, these are the cards that I brought from uh, the, uh, you know, the second uh, try that I gave it to the scenario. And I'm going to go ahead and shuffle them with my deck. Okay, and we're ready to play. Uh, so this is the beginning of round one. So we skip uh, for the round steps. Uh, we skip... Um, to step number three from the player's aid. So we basically begin our player turn. And uh, keep in mind that uh, because we start at level two, we do have one expert effect uh, token that we can use uh, for, uh, you know, uh, for boosting our actions, okay? Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, draw. Uh, so our hand limit is at four. Okay, so this is what uh, my hand looks like. And we're gonna uh, begin with uh, using some movement points over here in the map. Uh, let's see what we have. So I definitely wanna explore that tile over there. Um, and looks like we're gonna have some quick combat going on with these two tiles. Remember, uh, because our hero is level two, uh, those level one um, spaces, um, you know, the, the just uh, quick combat will take place. So 
uh, let's go ahead and use uh, our first movement point and we're gonna move to uh, this and we're gonna gain our uh, two uh, um, building uh, materials and we're then gonna increase our production uh, of uh, building materials to four and we're also gonna make sure to place a uh, black uh, cube there to make sure it's been visited visited and uh, actually uh, you know uh, let's use a faction cube for that uh, and now we're gonna um, so as our first movement point we're gonna use another movement point to uh, move here uh, and uh, that's gonna uh, we're gonna put the visited cube on that and that's gonna allow us to roll a treasure die and uh, just gain the result from that uh, so uh, treasure die there you go let's see what we got okay so we roll a resource die and we uh, get the result okay so we get one valuable excellent okay so we put these away and uh, we still have one uh, movement point we're gonna use that movement point to uh, flip this tile okay and let's see how we want to uh, position that okay so we're gonna position it like that and we don't have any further movement points left so before we move on to round two i want to go ahead and flip my um uh, my building token because i want to build uh, that um uh, let's see uh, stage guild uh, city hall uh, so i want to go ahead and build that city hall um, uh, so that i have uh, access to some resources uh, moving forward in the round uh, so i'll go ahead and uh, get rid of uh, these 10 and four building materials and uh, i'll go ahead and get that city hall built okay there we go all right we're gonna position that there and uh, there's that so we've built the city hall and every resource round we're gonna get a, a couple bonuses there uh, so with that, I don't really have any further actions, nothing to play from my hand. Uh, I don't really plan to do more town actions. So now we move on to round two. So let's move the cube to um, the number two here. And uh, this is an astrologer's uh, predict round, so let's see what we got. All right, so we got Charlie and the Circus. Uh, at the beginning of this round and the next one, each player can draw up to three cards from any neutral units deck and recruit one of them. The players, must, uh, the players must still pay the recruitment cost and have the corresponding dwelling in their town. Shuffle the remaining cards back into the respective deck afterwards. Okay, um, so at the beginning of this uh, round and the next one. Interesting. Uh, why don't we explore the silver unit uh, deck? So uh, we are going to draw up to three cards. Okay, let's see. Ooh, another salad. That's cool. Uh, Medusas and um, vampires. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go with the vampires because of the high uh, because of the high initiative, and uh, I'll go ahead and shuffle the medusas back into the encounter deck, okay, uh, into the uh, neutral unit deck, and uh, I'll go ahead and pay the nine. So I'll keep the vampires. Uh, let's see, uh, ten. I return one. There we go. And now this is part of my army. Neat. Um, and I'm just gonna keep this here uh, as a reminder. Okay, uh, so, uh, and uh, remi you know, remember, I was able to do that thanks to the fact that I have the silver dwelling built. Okay, so uh, that's a good start. Uh, now we proceed with the rest of the round setup. I flip my uh, tokens. I'm going to leave my hand as it is from before, okay? Uh, my hand limit is still five, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not really going to change anything uh, else. Uh, so let's uh, see how we're going to use our movement points. And let's also flip our uh, build token. I forgot to do that. And the first thing that I'll do uh, is, uh, so I think I want to see if I uh, tackle that level three. So we're playing in hard difficulty, which means that I would have to draw uh, two silvers and one bronze. So I think I should be able to tackle that. Uh, but I do want to, um, I do want to upgrade my griffins. I have six gold, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll flip my population token, and I'll. Um, uh, I'll spend six, okay, uh, three, three, all right, so I'll just six to reinforce uh, the uh, griffins, so there we go, uh, okay, so now we have that upgraded unit, 
and uh, we're gonna use the first movement point to uh, we're gonna use the first movement point to move in here and uh, let's uh, go see what happens uh, we're then um, uh, before I draw so I need to draw two silver units as I showed I'm not gonna look at them yet okay so two silver units one uh, one uh, bronze unit but I need to arrange my units first so and now we flip this and uh, let's see what we got so we got a crusader gorgons and centaurs uh, so uh, we got initiative five initiative seven so centaurs definitely go first then the gorgons and then the crusaders um, and I could do it in any order really uh, but um, okay it looks like we have a lot of armor going on um, we're gonna try to tackle that luckily we do go first and um, uh, I like that the vampires ignore the uh, initiative attack that is pretty neat so uh, let's see how we tackle this okay so the griffins will go first and I'm gonna try to attack that uh, gorgon and I'm gonna try to go all out uh, on it because uh, that four retaliate is a problem uh, so uh, I'm trying to deal six damage here uh, so I'm gonna just use my expert effect and I'll use these two uh, uh, So I'll give it six more attack in total using my expert effect in one of them So that's three more attack that I'm giving the griffin. I do still have the uh, uh, shield of dwarven lords, okay? Uh, but as long as I don't get a minus one, I'll be fine uh, And let's uh, see what happens Okay, I got a plus one. That's excellent. So uh, the gorgons are gone. So that's seven damage minus uh, the two armor that's five damage total okay so now the gorgons are gone uh, thank goodness because that is scary with the four attack um, and that was my griffin's activation okay and i'm gonna put this away uh, into my discard pile so that was the highest initiative and now we move on to initiative eight uh, so uh, now uh, for initiative eight I move uh, the vampires, they fly, so they can go over, and uh, I'm gonna, um, let's see, do I wanna move it in this direction? Um, I think I wanna put it here. Um, I want, I think I want the crusaders attacking the vampires uh, because they do ignore the retaliation attack. I like that. So uh, now the vampires, I'm not gonna boost them in any way. Let's just roll, okay? Hopeful, hoping for a, at least uh, a plus one or zero. All right, minus one, so no damage, and ignore the retaliation attack from uh, the Crusaders. So um, the Crusaders don't retaliate. I've activated the Vampires, and uh, that's Initiative 8. We move on to Initiative 7. Uh, so Centaurs will move to attack the Griffins, and uh, let's roll. Okay, so that's minus one. So the um, Griffins take one damage, okay, and then they retaliate. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's plus one, so that's four damage. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, four damage, there you go. Uh, all right, uh, and that was the um, Centaur's activation, so that's nine, eight, seven, and now we move on to five. Uh, it looks like that's the next one. So I'm gonna try to have the Zealots attack the Crusaders, uh, so uh, we roll. Plus one, excellent. So that's uh, four damage against the two armor. Crusaders take two damage, okay? Um, uh, all right, so now uh, that was the Salad's activation and they do have the same initiative, but as I've uh, mentioned before, uh, the, um, uh, the attacker has priority with uh, initiative ties and then uh, you go back and forth between the two. Uh, attacker and defender with initiative ties. So Zealots went first, now uh, Crusaders uh, attack. So uh, Crusaders will uh, try attacking units of their high of their same tier. So Crusaders attack the Vampires. Let's see. So, uh, oh, and during any attack, roll two attack dice and resolve the higher outcome. Let's see. Okay, so we resolve the zero. So that means the, um, the Vampire takes three. Okay, uh, and uh, let's see, uh, zero, yep, the vampire takes three, okay, now the vampire retaliates, uh, so uh, crusader is activated, and then the vampire gets to retaliate now, okay, uh, and we're going to put a retaliation 
token on that, uh, and we're gonna roll. Hopefully a plus one, and it'll take care of the Crusaders. Plus one, excellent, I uh, love that. So now the, uh, so yeah, it's four damage minus the two shield, Crusaders are toast, we put the Crusaders away, okay. And uh, the vampires have retaliated, and I do still have uh, the marksmen and the halberdiers. Now, um, the uh, marksmen, uh, the, uh, sorry, the halberdiers are not going to reach the centaurs this turn. So now the marksmen will attack the centaurs, okay? Uh, so we roll, uh, even with a minus one, should be fine. So that's two damage against the centaurs. Centaurs are toast, and I was able to take care of this in one round, not having to use more movement points. Not having to use more movement points for uh, prolonging the uh, neutral combat. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the rest of these tokens uh, and uh, you know heal all our units. Uh, those vampires did a um, dandy job, really, really good job, um, pretty powerful. So now uh, with that, we move on to the map and we are gonna put our uh, faction cube here. We immediately gain the resource bonus from. Uh, conquering that mine, so we gain five resources, okay, so we put that over here, five resources, and uh, we now increase our um, our gold production by five, and we still have two movement points left, and of course uh, we also need to level up before I decide what to do with my movement points, so uh, because uh, the field that I uh, battled is one level higher, or just level higher than my hero, I gain two experience points, so one, two. Okay, so now I go up to level three, and let's see what uh, we get from leveling to level three. So let's see. So level three, my hand limit has increased to five, and I search to the ability deck. So currently the ability deck has uh, fire magic on top, uh, plus one for spells uh, from the school of fire magic. This is pretty powerful. Um, I don't really have any other permanent cards, so you can only have one permanent card at a time, and this works with, with Magic Arrow. Uh, so this is a pretty safe bet, honestly, so I'll go ahead and just keep Fire Magic uh, from the discard pile. I'm not gonna do the search. Now, remember, when there's no cards left in the discard pile of the artifact, um, ability, or um, spell deck, make sure that you now take a card from the top and um, place it there in its place, all right? So now there's always at least one card in the discard pile. And this time we have sorcery. Now that goes to the top of the discard pile, okay? But this will go to my hand. And in fact, uh, now that I've played that, let me go, well, now that I've acquired that, let me just go ahead and play it, okay? Uh, we still have two movement points left. And so yeah, I think I'll just leave that to my secondary hero later. Uh, I'll let the secondary hero scour that area. I'll simply flip this and start moving my way back to the rest of the map, uh, okay? Uh, and uh, that looks like it's it for round two. Let's go ahead and move on to round three. Okay, so now we start a new round. Uh, we're gonna move the round cube to round three, and this is a resource round. Uh, so I do have the city hall effect. I wanna make sure I don't forget that. Uh, at the beginning of each resource round, I can choose to gain a, uh, either five gold or one movement point. I think I'll go ahead and do the five gold. Uh, okay, uh, okay, there we go, five gold. Uh, okay, now um, there's also uh, there's also the conventional uh, resource uh, uh, gaining. So uh, we're gonna do uh, f that's uh, another fifteen gold. Okay, so let's do ten. Okay, and then another uh, five. So we got our 15 gold. There we go. And uh, we're then going to do uh, the four building materials. So that's uh, three and then one. There we go. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's it for gaining resources. Uh, and now, I also want to make sure that I trigger this effect. So we have uh, astrologers, um, uh, the astrologers proclaim effect from earlier. It affected last round and then this, which is the following round. Uh, so I have another opportunity to draw cards from the AI deck. So I want to draw three. And let's see if, if there's one that I want to recruit. Wow, 
once again because i'm interested in higher initiative i think i'll go ahead and recruit the liches and that's gonna cost me 12 gold so that's 10 and then two okay so let's get rid of that and i'll keep the liches i like that and then these get shuffled back into the uh, neutral units deck okay and we now um uh, we now have uh, all of these units in my army. I like that. Uh, I haven't had to uh, reinforce my army yet. Uh, pretty, looking pretty strong so far. Uh, so let's um, let's do the rest of the round steps. And let's just put this in the discard pile. I don't think that effect will matter anymore. Uh, so uh, we now go to... Um, player turn and let's also make sure that I flip my tokens so there's the population token my uh, movement tokens and um, I f oh and my uh, expert effect token and now we go to draw now these are my cards currently in hand uh, I'm not gonna discard them I think they're fine so uh, let's draw up to five okay which is my current hand limit okay so that's five and i want to see how much gold i have left so currently i have um i have 13. okay so first i want to move uh, my hero here to see what resource i get so let's put a visited cube here and let's roll the um let's roll the resource die and see what it says Okay, so that's four, uh, that's four building materials, so I'll go ahead and add that to my supply. And then uh, with that, I have a couple more movement points left, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to uh, then flip this tile, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, and uh, it looks like that is a settlement, and there is an event that we need to read from uh, the campaign uh, instructions okay so i'm gonna position the map tile like this and now we're gonna go to the campaign uh, instructions and i'll let you read the uh, flavor uh, text uh, when you do the mission on your end uh, for now i just want to focus on the mechanical effects that we're talking about here so if you enter a field with a settlement the field difficulty is equal to the level of your hero Add an additional unit of a few medusas to the army on that tile. Uh, and if I capture it, uh, I get to uh, gain a uh, bonus. Uh, yeah, I want to, I want to switch um, before the round ends, so I've run out of movement points, but I want to flip my population token to recruit my secondary hero. I need to pay my 10 first. Let's do that. So that's uh, one, two... Okay, and there we go. Uh, we have um, uh, ten gold total, and I'm gonna place it. Uh, I'm gonna place it on my town. Okay, and now I have two extra, uh, two extra um, movement points uh, that I can use for the secondary hero. Uh, so um, let's put that uh, here, I suppose. Okay. So um, before I um, uh, before I uh, end the round, let me just move it, uh, move my hero one uh, step in this direction. Now I don't want to quite enter into that field yet uh, for gaining spells because uh, I want to uh, during the next round before combat starts. My plan is to add an extra spell to my hand to have a better chance of winning the encounter in the settlement okay so i'm gonna uh, i'm not gonna utilize this other movement point for uh, the secondary hero for this round and that is the end of round three we're gonna move on to round four so i'm gonna move the uh, round cube to round four and this is an astrologer predict round so let's flip one of these cards and see what it says uh, astrologers proclaim a week of the crazy wizard 
until the next astrologer's round, the first spell card played by each player is returned to the player's hand instead of being discarded. Wow, this is awesome. Uh, so let's see what kind of spell I'm gonna get from, um, from that in a second. Uh, so I just hope I don't forget this. Uh, so uh, we move to the other steps of the round. We flip the population token back and uh, I didn't end up using my elite um, effect, my expert effect. We flip our movement points and uh, that is it. We start a new round. So player turn. I'm gonna discard any number of cards from my hand. Uh, so I want to discard these defense cards. I want a more aggressive hand. So I'll discard these two and draw another two. We have view air and power. First thing, let's uh, use the secondary hero to move them here. And remember, the secondary hero can, when they acquire cards, they go to my hand, even though the secondary hero technically can't use cards from uh, my hand during combat. So we put a visited token here, and I'm gonna pay the three gold, and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna uh, look at the spells and add it to my hand for uh, this uh, combat that I'm about to uh, do in this settlement. Now, this is what's on top of the spell um, card, uh, the spell pile, this card pile, and I'm not interested in this spell at the moment, so I'm gonna look at the top two, I'm gonna search two, and then pick one and discard the other. Let's see. We got a magic arrow and a disrupting ray. Until the end of combat, the selected unit cannot use their special ability. This can come in handy, um, actually. Uh, so let's think about this. So early on, uh, when I decided which cards to carry over, I didn't bring Magic Arrow with me. Normally, if I already had a Magic Arrow in my deck, I would have gone with the Disrupting Ray. But let's go with the Magic Arrow. So I'm just going to keep this, and this is going to go on top of the spell discard pile and uh, remember another benefit is that magic arrow benefits from fire magic magic arrow uses all the schools of magic you can check from the you can see from the corners okay so this will go to my hand paid my three gold visited this field and um, now uh, i before i go into combat uh, i uh, i want to use this now uh, the first um, the first spell card played by each player is returned to the player's hand instead of being discarded. So uh, I want to go ahead and do that with View Air, which is another card that I have uh, uh, that I have um, in my hand that I drew earlier. Uh, so that lets me gain three gold. And this is one of those rare cards that you don't have to play during combat. You can play them while in the world map. So I gain three gold, return it to my hand. Gain three gold, so that'll give me six gold. Okay, I think I, I have plenty of the other resources, so uh, I don't mind uh, right now. Uh, so that's uh, six gold right there. Now, do I want to upgrade my units before I uh, uh, jump into the fray there? And uh, I think not. Um, I think I'm gonna skip that. I have a pretty decent hand, although actually, uh, I might want to. Um, I might want to get my Crusaders, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna recruit my Crusaders, uh, so I'll flip this population token and uh, I'll recruit my Crusaders for six, uh, just so that I have a bit of a stronger army and so that I can use my Crusaders card with uh, them if necessary. Uh, so I have, uh, I have plenty of uh, army cards here that I can use, so it's looking good. So there's my army currently. Uh, and uh, I'm not gonna, do I wanna use this trading post? Um, I don't wanna, you know what, sure. Uh, why don't we, uh, I can always, um, or actually no, uh, I can wait. I don't have to use a trading post yet. I'll wait until after combat. So now uh, we have our army. Uh, I already used this effect, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put it over here. Okay, and uh, now, Let's uh, use my main hero's movement points, and I'll move to uh, this uh, settlement, and now combat begins. Uh, so before I draw the enemy units, uh, oh, and do keep in mind that I have to add, uh, no matter what, I have to add a, a few Medusas to the enemy, uh, the to the enemy. Uh, okay, 
um, that's part of the part of the setup. But uh, in my case, these are the units that I'm gonna bring. Let's let's see how what well, uh, I'm gonna choose five units to bring and how I'm gonna arrange them. Okay, so here's how I'm gonna arrange my units, and now we're gonna draw the two. Um, we're gonna draw the two neutral units and we're going to add them to the medusas and that's what we're going to fight and uh, my current level is three remember uh, it's not actually the level that you're going to ignore the level that is shown in the settlement according to scenario instructions it's supposed to be my same level and that actually suits me right now because i'm level three so that works out great uh, so i'm glad i found that uh, settlement early and now we have elves uh, all right, that's kind of dangerous. So we have Medusas, Elves, uh, Pegasi, um, like so. All right, so that's how the enemy units will be arranged. Uh, and I'm just going to move this over here. And now uh, combat begins. Okay, so my first move will be uh, at initiative 9, which is the highest with the Griffin. I'm going to move to attack the Pegasi. And uh, I'm going to use the expert effect of offense, so that'll give it plus two, um, a plus two attack to the griffins, and uh, I'll draw a card, which in this case is leadership, okay? And uh, that's going to be five against the Pegasi, uh, who has no armor, so now we're going to roll and see uh, if I need to... Oh, that's a minus one, okay. So now I'm going to use uh, shield of dwarven lords, uh, use after the attack die roll, ignore the attack die, and any additional effects triggered. So um, uh, now I deal 5 to the Pegasi, and the Pegasi is gone. So uh, now the Griffins have their activation cube on them. This goes to the discard pile. So that's... Um, that's um, that is uh, initiative nine and now we move on to initiative eight which is the next highest one uh, we're gonna attack uh, the minotaurs and we're gonna attack the minotaurs and uh, let's see okay so i'll just go ahead and cast magic arrow now um, I, I have to do it before i roll the attack uh, remember the uh, arrow icon i can do it during the unit activation uh, so I can't do it like after the attack or anything like that now it already has one boost uh, one uh, spell power from fire magic thanks to the magic arrow having all schools of magic so that already deals two damage but I'm also gonna discard um, uh, this card to give it that extra spell power so that's um, that's uh, f uh, three damage in total that I'm gonna do to the minotaur so I'm gonna put this here and uh, these two go to the discard pile. That's my spell for the combat round. And now the vampires will attack the minotaurs and it'll ignore the retaliation attack. Okay, so that's plus one. Uh, so that's four minus the two damage, uh, minus, the, minus the two shields. The minotaurs are gone. So we're gonna put this over here. And uh, now I put this activation token on the vampires. And uh, that uh, was uh, initiative eight. Now, moving on to initiative seven, uh, we have liches. Now, I want to attack the elves uh, with the uh, liches, but um, uh, because I'm attacking from the back row to the back row, uh, that means that uh, there's going to be a penalty. Okay, so I'm going to roll two dice and I have to choose the worst result. So we're going to attack the elves. Okay, so that's plus one and minus one. So I have to choose the worst result, so that's two. And then against the elf, uh, because it has the one armor, that's just one damage, okay? And uh, that was initiative seven. Uh, and there's also the Lich's uh, uh, ability. Uh, choose a unit adjacent to the target and attack it. For the purposes of this attack, the attack damage is two. So I roll again uh, against the Medusas. Let's see, and I choose the worst result. Okay, so minus one, so uh, attack value two. Minus one, that's attack value one, and then the shield, Medusas take no damage, okay? All right, so that was the Lich's activation. We now move on to the Elves' activation. Okay, so now the Elves, or uh, the enemy ranged units, prioritize attacking uh, opposing units of their same tier, then lower and then higher. Now, um, there's no lower or the same tier, so now it'll attack another one of my ranged units. 
and um, in this case let's have it attack the zealots in case of ties I get to choose so now because the elves are not attacking to the back row they don't get the penalty okay so they just roll one and uh, they do have an ability uh, on a minus one or zero attacks the target again let's see okay so that's a zero minus the one armor that's one okay and now the elves get to attack again so we roll uh, we roll the uh, salads, uh, let's see, um, so uh, we'll just roll again, and uh, no penalty, so that's again another zero, so they just take one other damage, okay, so that was the elves activation, and now we move on to initiative uh, five, which is the uh, crusaders, and they are tied with the medusas, because I'm the attacker, I, um, I move first, so one, two, three, I'm gonna move to attack the Medusa, uh, Medusas, and I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, use the Crusader's ability, so I'm gonna give it, um, I'm gonna give it plus two uh, attack, okay, so as long as I don't roll a, uh, as long as I don't roll a, uh, a minus one, uh, the Medusas will be gone, but let's see, ah, that's unfortunate, so um, now, uh, so that's uh, four minus the uh, four minus the one, so that's three damage on the Medusas, and they get to retaliate. Okay, uh, so uh, let's put a retaliation um, cube on the Medusas. This goes to the discard pile, and let's see, Medusas retaliate. Now it is a ranged unit because it's attacking a adjacent unit. It gets a penalty, so it rolls two, and it picks up the worst result. Ah, wow, really? Okay, uh, sure. Uh, let's, um, uh, let's, uh, so that's two. Okay then. Uh, and uh, the Crusaders will take two damage, and now the Medusas will get to attack. Uh, that's the last, um, I forgot to put my activation cube on this. Now the Medusa has an ability, uh, and uh, which uh, says after the retaliation attack roll an attack die on a zero the target is paralyzed so uh, the crusaders took the two damage from her retaliating and now we see if they get paralyzed okay so the crusaders get paralyzed so i'll do that and uh, now we uh, roll uh, we roll the medusas against the crusaders and again they have a penalty so uh, they have a penalty so um, uh, we roll two and we pick the worst result. Uh, they have to attack the adjacent target. Okay, so the Medusas um, deal because of the two shields and the one, uh, uh, the minus one, uh, the Medusas deal no damage to the Crusaders. Okay, uh, so that is it. So that was the Medusas activation and the retaliation. Now, paralysis tokens don't prevent uh, the uh, or they don't prevent units from retaliating. So now we're gonna resolve the retaliation attack from the Crusader. So we're gonna put a retaliation token uh, from the Medusa activating. And now we're gonna roll uh, one die and see what happens. Zero, so uh, that's three damage minus the one armor. So the Medusas are gone, okay? Um, there we go. So we uh, put this here, 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 and the Medusas are actually this, the, these are the um, these are the faction medusas they're not part of those decks I just you know, have it uh, now the elves uh, I get to attack them with the salads uh, so that's the everything else has been activated I just need to attack with the salads let's see if I can take care of them now and not have to spend another movement point awesome so uh, elves are gone so that's four damage minus the one armor more than enough so we've taken care of uh, all units, and uh, now let's go ahead and clear the battlefield. Okay, so that was that, and we, uh, this is the only card left in my hand. Uh, I still have a few movement points left, but let's go ahead and resolve this uh, combat. So uh, I just finished a combat that's equal to my level, so let me make sure that I gain my experience point. So I gain one experience point from that and uh, I've conquered this settlement. So once again, let's look at what we can do uh, in the settlement. So let's see what we gain from that. Okay, so now uh, what I'm gonna choose uh, for this settlement is I'm gonna choose to gain valuables from it 
and as the first player to gain control of it, I gain the uh, resource immediately. So I gain one valuable, this goes to my discard pile, and uh, I'm going to increase my valuables production by one. And remember, from the scenario instructions, there's some. Um, uh, it says that when you conquer, uh, when you capture this settlement, uh, you can either recruit a secondary hero for free or gain 10 gold. So I want to go ahead and gain the, that uh, 10 gold, okay? Um, and we've done that, uh, and now we can keep spending our movement points, but before I do that, uh, I want to flip this population token, and I want to uh, build that Brotherhood of the Sword. So it's going to cost me 8 gold, so I return 10 and give back 2, and then that's going to be 4 uh, building materials, so there we go. And uh, then I put this building uh, here, so that's the Brotherhood of the Sword, we put that there, there we go. Uh, okay, uh, and now that'll give me another bonus uh, each uh, resource round. So that's looking good, uh, and we now uh, spend the rest of our uh, uh, the rest of our uh, movement points. So let's um, let's flip this movement token, and let's gain um, uh, let's gain uh, that. Uh, let's put a visited token on this field, and I gain a uh, valuable. Okay, so that's another valuable, and um, and. Uh, we then, um, I think I'm going to then move here. I'm not going to trade right now. I just want to start moving towards these other uh, tiles, okay? Because uh, I want I want to go around. And like I said, I want to, uh, you know, visit all of that. Uh, and now I am planning here a bit ahead because uh, next round, which is the fourth round, the first enemy hero will appear. Now the enemy hero will appear on the rightmost on the rightmost, you're supposed to look at the map from this perspective, right? So it'll appear on the rightmost blocked field, which will be there. I'll go ahead and spend uh, this um, uh, this movement point on revealing this uh, because uh, I um, uh, I want to hopefully make it so that the enemy hero will spawn here based on the scenario instructions. Remember, on round four the enemy hero will spawn on the rightmost blocked field. Currently this is it. But uh, hopefully I can rotate this tile so that um, uh, so that uh, I, this can still be the uh, rightmost uh, tile. Oh, and, and uh, well, it looks like uh, I can still. Well, uh, it's kind of a tie. All right, yeah, that's fine. That's all right. This they're both kind of the same, so I think I'll be able to choose. That's fine. So now I can basically just um, uh, I can rotate this however I want. So I think I'll place it like so, okay? Um, there you go. So we're gonna place it like that, and um, now we've run out of movement points, and that's the end of round um, four. We're gonna move on to round five. Okay, so we begin a new round, and uh, let's move the round cube first of all. So now this is the reminder of a event. So we move the round cube to round number five, and then we check our uh, we check our uh, scenario reference. So fifth round, uh, read the dark cloud from the north section. I'll let you do that. That's just mostly for flavor uh, when you do the scenario later. Then uh, place the first charging hero's army on the rightmost blocked field. Okay. Uh, now I. Um, I, I suppose I could choose uh, because they're both the rightmost blocked field, okay? Uh, so I just want to go ahead and have combat uh, sooner than later. Uh, so I'll put the enemy, uh, char the charges army, enemy hero, I'll place it there. Now let's proceed with the normal round steps. So this is a resource round and uh, let me ready this card because I want to make sure that I don't forget that I have this effect active. This is active for the current uh, round, okay? Uh, so uh, this is also active for this round. So this is a resource round. Let's gain our resources. So uh, we have, um, let's start with our bonuses. So we have City Hall and then Brotherhood of the Sword. So uh, let's gain a morale token, okay? 
uh, and let's put that here okay so we got a morale uh, token uh, actually let's put it here I think that way I can see my resources better so uh, we got a morale token and uh, from, that's from Brotherhood of the Sword now from City Hall um, let's gain our five gold and I think moving forward I'll probably want to start gaining those movement points but let's uh uh, let's gain our uh, five uh, actually yeah five gold from city hall and actually when you add it to our standard resource income that's 20 gold in total right so 15 plus uh, the five from city hall that's uh, 20 re uh, gold okay total then building materials we have four and then valuables we have uh, one okay uh, there we go so uh, tons of resources uh, to go around and um, let's flip our population tokens okay and our movement point uh, tokens and uh, that's the beginning of round uh, five uh, so now uh, let's see how we're gonna use our movement oh and let's not forget our um, expert effect token and now let's draw up to uh, my current hand limit is five so this is the only card in my hand so one two and then uh, I draw two more so I'm gonna shuffle my discard pile okay and draw two more okay one two excellent hand okay uh, and uh, we now uh, we now move uh, to spending our movement points first I want to go ahead and acquire a pair of artifacts to aid me in combat so how uh, I'll flip the secondary hero token and I'm gonna visit that field. Now remember the secondary hero for the purposes of quick combat is the same level as the primary hero. Okay, so this is level 3. We're moving into a level 2 field. Quick combat takes place. Uh, we put a visited token here and we do our standard artifact search. Uh, so let's uh, do a uh, search. Let's see the artifact. Now uh, we have a sword of judgment. Um, discard X cards to gain X uh, or uh, discard X cards to gain X uh, defense. So uh, I mm, this could be powerful for sure uh, but uh, at this level of combat not too much. Uh, I would rather just uh, use things that don't make me discard from my hand uh, so let's just look at the top two artifacts and pick one. Uh, see, much better. Uh, we have Dragon Scale Armor and then Crest of Valor. Uh, so let's do uh, let's do Dragon Scale Armor for sure. This will go to my hand. This goes to the discard pile. Uh, so that was my first movement point now uh, from, from the secondary hero. Okay. Now for the primary hero, we um, are going to use this other movement point. We're going to move to this field. Same thing happens. Okay. Uh, it's the same field, just on the other side of the map. We put a visited token here, and let's see, do I want that Crest of Valor, uh, gain a morale token, ignore a um, negative morale from the field. I already have leadership, uh, and I already have a morale from uh, Brotherhood of the Sword, so let's dig for other things. So let's go to uh, the discard pile here. Wait, let's see. Remove one, ha uh, one card from your hand, search to cards in the deck, remove this card and another one from your discard pile, and then Loins of Legion. Um, hmm. uh, this, ooh, uh, what should I pick here? Let's see. Um, ah, being able to reduce the reinforcement cost of stuff immediately, that doesn't sound bad at all. So I think uh, I'll, I'll do Loins of Legion. I can get rid of that later. Put this on top. And this goes to my hand, okay? Uh, so I've reinforced my hand a bit from those two visits and now let's assault the hero. Now keep in mind that uh, this scenario has additional rules and one of them is that uh, you can enter a blocked field if the enemy hero is in that field. Now the enemy hero in this scenario as I showed you in those rules uh, as well, uh, they move after you in, in turn order. Now the enemy hero could technically come to me and assault me, uh, but that's all right. I'll just go ahead and get it out of the way. I'll just spend two movement points, and let's have uh, let's move into this uh, field and just attack the enemy hero. So now 
uh, combat will take place. And let's pull up the enemy uh, chart to see uh, what enemies are we're going to be facing. Okay, so I've gathered the AI cards, which is uh, instructs you to for the charging armies. Uh, it's three might cards and one magic card, and I've gathered the spells, which is two stone skin, two slow, which is shared up uh, by all enemy hero armies for the game. So I'll just shuffle this, and uh, there we go. There's the enemy hero uh, AI deck and spell deck. And now uh, we're gonna uh, place the battlefield. Uh, I'm gonna place my units in the battlefield, and uh, I'm gonna arrange them. And then uh, I'm gonna arrange them, and then we'll begin combat. Now remember, before combat begins, you're allowed to uh, you're allowed to um, uh, you're allowed to reinforce your unit, flip uh, your uh, population token to reinforce your unit units. So I'll go ahead and do that. And uh, I'll use Loins of Legion to reduce the reinforcement cost of Crusaders by 5. So that'll be 17 in total that I have to pay. Uh, so I'll return these 20 and I'll put um, 3 back. And there we go. We've uh, paid our reinforcement cost. And there's our reinforced Zealots and Crusaders. This goes to my discard pile. And uh, now let's arrange our units in the battlefield. Uh, and I must not forget, I have this uh, nearby. I just want to make sure that the first spell that I cast goes back to my hand this round. That's still active. So I'm going to put my Crusaders here, my Zealots here, my uh, Vampires here, my Griffins here, and my Liches here. So here's how I'm going to arrange my units. And now we're going to arrange the enemy units. We have Manticores, a few Minotaurs, and a pack of Evil Eyes. So let's do this, um, like that, and then like this. There we go. So now combat begins. Okay, so the highest initiative we have is the Griffins. So Griffins will move to attack the Manticores. Now before that, I want to cast Chain Lightning, and I'm not going to uh, add any spell power. I select a unit and two other units adjacent to it, and uh, I deal one damage to each of them and there's no uh, any kind of protection from spell power or anything like that uh, so from spells so they just all take one damage there you go so chain lighting uh, goes to my discard pile actually no <laughs> astrologers proclaim uh, now finally I remembered uh, this chain lighting goes to my hand but that's my spell for the first combat round uh, so now I can finally discard this it's not gonna be relevant anymore uh, so now uh, Griffins will attack the Manticores, and uh, I want to use a uh, expert offense on that. Uh, so that'll get plus two, uh, plus two uh, attack, and I'll draw a card, and we got a spell power. Now I don't want the Manticores to even attack, honestly. So I'll just use the uh, Dragon Scale armor, and I'll uh, I'll attack the Manticores with that. So that's um, that's uh, seven damage total. Okay, uh, there we go. So seven minus the one, that's um, that's uh, six total. So the Manticores are gone. They don't get to activate. Okay, uh, and with that, we've uh, activated our first unit. That's the Griffins. Uh, and now we move on to initiative eight. So initiative eight, uh, I want the uh, vampires to attack the Minotaurs. So they'll fly back there. And uh, I'll attack the Minotaurs and they'll ignore the retaliation attack. Okay, so that's three damage minus the one armor, that's two, and um, no other effects, so ignore the retaliation attack, that's it. So we put an activation token on Vampires. Now we move on to Initiative 7. So I get to activate one of my Initiative 7 folks uh, before the enemy activates their evil eyes. Uh, so I am gonna go with um, let's try uh, let's try activating the salads against the evil eyes. Okay, so salads will uh, activate uh, salads will activate against the uh, evil eyes. Uh, I'm hoping that the crusaders will be able to take care of the minotaurs. But let's first activate the salads against the evil eyes and see. So uh, do I want to play any cards? Uh, no, let's just uh, hope for the best. Okay, so that's our minus one. Uh, and so with the two armor, uh, why don't we use the um, leadership uh, token to reroll that? So we discarded, reroll. Okay, so that's four damage minus one, so that's three. 
so there's two health left, and then when we flip to the other side, uh, we'll put one damage there. Okay, so that's two. Uh, so that's the Zealot's activation. We uh, have done that now. Now uh, there's no there's no longer a um, there's no longer a uh, initiative seven enemy because of what just happened. So now uh, I get to activate my liches, which is great. Uh, so uh, let's see. Um, uh, do I want to reroll? Um, uh, do I want to get a leadership token? Uh, three, I think. Yeah, even with the minus one, this should be fine. Uh, so let's attack um, uh, with the liches. Let's attack the evil eyes. So we're gonna roll. Um, uh, we're gonna roll against the evil eyes. So uh, oh, and we do get a combat penalty. Okay. Because uh, we're attacking back row to back row. So Liches will attack the Evil Eyes. So uh, the worst result. So that's two. Uh, that's that's uh, still, uh, that's still uh, not enough. So uh, Evil Eyes is gone. Okay. Uh, now I do have to, uh, I'm forced to resolve this attack against an adjacent unit. The only adjacent unit is the Vampires. So same thing. I roll both die and I have to choose the worst result okay wow that that's great so uh damn okay i don't want to lose those vampires <laughs> like i really don't want to lose them so uh i am hoping that um the crusaders uh will take care of the minotaurs so um now we move on to uh we move on to actually uh so yeah that's four yeah uh so now we move on to um the initiative six we attack the minotaur so one two we move there and just in case i want to be able to re-roll a, a worst case scenario so uh, i'm gonna gain a leadership token okay uh, and let's uh, see let's attack the minotaur please don't be a minus one christ let's re-roll please don't be a minus one okay much better so now the minotaurs are gone they don't get to activate so that's two and there's no uh, retaliation ability or anything like that. So that's five minus the two damage. Uh, minotaurs are gone. So with that, we've, um, uh, we've uh, bested the uh, charging hero army. And uh, keep in mind that, uh, keep in mind that, uh, you know, unless the scenario instructs uh, uh, otherwise, uh, you don't really get any, uh, you know, experience or anything like that from defeating the hero. The scenario doesn't say as much so the hero is simply gone okay so we're gonna remove the hero figure uh, we're gonna just uh, retire it over here for now and uh, we now have one movement point left so let's also uh, make sure to clear the battlefield okay so you uh, according to scenario instructions you do gain uh, two valuables from defeating the uh, enemy uh, hero okay uh, so i gain my two valuables and um, with that, uh, I uh, have cleared the battlefield. I only have one movement point left. Why don't we go ahead and spend it? So I move my secondary hero over here and I visit this field and I gain three gold uh, from that. Uh, so let's uh, gain our three gold. And uh, there we go, we got plenty of resources. Uh, nothing that I wanna build at the moment. Uh, and uh, that's it, a few cards left in hand, but nothing much else to do. Uh, but with that, uh, we have ended round five, we move on to round six. Okay, so now starting round six, uh, this is an astrologer's predict round. So let's uh, go through our round steps. So we first, um, we first uh, check uh, the astrologer's predict. So it says, uh, until the next, next astrologer's round, each hero gains one extra movement. That is awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra movement point for my heroes here, uh, and that's gonna be for two rounds in a row. Love it. Uh, okay. So now let's do the other round steps. So I uh, flip this. I flip this, uh, and I am gonna re um, restore my movement points for my hero. And I'm gonna draw up to, uh, I'm gonna draw up to five now. Uh, let me see what I wanna keep from here. Uh, so I think I'm gonna discard uh, Magic Arrow because uh, uh, being able to return Chain Lightning with Knowledge is already pretty powerful. So I'll return this and I'll draw two more cards. Okay, my current hand limit is five. All right, cool. Uh, so I have that hand pretty potent and 
Now let's move around uh, the map and uh, keep uh, clearing uh, fields. On, of course, let's move the round counter to six, uh, the round cube to six. Let's, uh, of course, I forgot to do that. And now uh, we have a whole bunch of movement points. Let's see what we want to do with them. Uh, so um, I think before I move my hero this way, uh, let's move our primary hero. Uh, I'm gonna. Um, uh, use a couple of movement points. Uh, actually, no, uh, this is my primary hero's movement pool. So I'm gonna use a couple movement points uh, because I'm in a stable. Uh, I get to flip this, okay, so I get another movement point. And um, let's spend a movement uh, point to reveal this uh, tile. Let's see what we get. Okay, uh, we got uh, experience, that's awesome, and then a level three. Um, uh, let's uh, make it like. Uh, if I make myself level four, I'll then be able to uh, clear this uh, easier. Okay. Uh, although I don't really need, uh, I really don't need more valuables. I think I have enough, so I'll leave that alone. Uh, there we go. So uh, now uh, I have some movement points over there, uh, but let's let's finish using these. So one and two. Uh, so I'll just move uh, here to. Um, I'll just move here to. Uh, gain that experience point and we're gonna level up. So we're gonna go to level four and let's see uh, Let's put a visited field and I'm also uh, well, I don't really need to uh, I don't really need to visit that tower. That's fine. So I just move through here. We put a um, We put a black cube here and we now um, Level up to four. Okay, so I gain a uh, again an extra uh, expert effect and uh, again if we refer to uh, this we have add a second specialty card uh, to uh, your deck. Okay, allows you playing two cards uh, per expert around. So we are gonna look at our specialty cards. Uh, here you go. So there's the here's the level four specialty. Uh, it, it gives a selected unit um, uh, increased health. Okay, so this goes to my hand. Uh, and I've used up all my movement points for uh, this hero uh, and now we are gonna um, use these three movement points one two and three uh, to move our uh, secondary hero this way okay and that was a quick round it was just moving around exploring and uh, leveling up our hero and uh, with that we can then move on to round seven Okay, so now we begin round seven. This is a resource round. So we move the round uh, cube and let's see. Uh, let's gain our uh, first our building bonuses. Uh, so I think I have plenty of um, movement points for now. So I'll just add my 15 uh, to my five from the city hall. So that's 20 gold. Okay. Uh, I'll also gain a uh, leadership, uh, sorry, a morale. Morale token, I think I've been calling it leadership accidentally. Morale token and uh, four, um, four building materials and one, uh, one uh, valuable, okay? Now, uh, with that, we also flip that. We flip all of our movement tokens. Remember, we have uh, one, each hero gains one extra movement. This, and the, the last astrologer's round and the current round, we gain extra movement points, okay? So uh, I think I can now discard this, all right? So I don't get confused next time. And now we can start uh, moving things around. Okay, so first let's see how many resources we have. Uh, okay, um, uh, specifically gold. Looks like we have, um, okay, we have 28 uh, gold. Uh, so uh, we might want to go ahead and build that glory of Verathia. Um, so uh, let's uh, do that because I don't really have a whole lot of other use for the gold currently. Uh, I could, uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's go ahead and build a, a glory of Verathia. So let's switch. Let's flip this and build. Um, Let's flip this and build that for 10 gold, uh, nine uh, building materials, and uh, four valuables. One, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. So that's four. Uh, okay, we got all of that. Okay, and then the balance valuables. One, two, three, four. So we got our glory over Athia, and now we are going to be able to 
uh, build uh, the strongest uh, units uh, that I uh, that I can. Okay, uh, very well. So that's Gloria Baratia, and uh, let's see how much these cost. So we got um, we got archangels and champions. Um, I don't have enough gold for archangels, but for champions I do. Uh, so. Oh, and I forgot to do the card and draw step. Uh, so let's get rid of these uh, two cards, okay? And draw up to five. Uh, there you go, okay? Uh, so uh, that's uh, what we have in hand. And now let's use uh, let's use uh, the first movement point to move into this field. And uh, I, it looks like I've, I might have forgotten to put a cube there. That's fine. So uh, let's roll. Uh, let's roll uh, two dice uh, for this field. Let's visit it. Quick combat happens. And, uh, okay, I'm gonna go with experience for that. Okay, we put a visited cube here and uh, we're gonna use another one of our hero's main movement points. Uh, we're gonna uh, gain a, a morale. Uh, so I just, uh, before I gain the morale, I discard that and draw a card. Okay. Um, and uh, we're gonna use another movement point. I gain three gold. Okay, and uh, we now um, let's put our visited cubes all around this. And uh, I'm also gonna visit this field uh, to gain five gold now. Uh, so that's five gold. Okay, there you go. So that's five. Uh, and I'm all gonna increase my gold production for, by. Uh, by uh, five, remember, um, quick combat takes place, my hero's level four, that field is level three. And that's all of my hero's movement. And now we're gonna uh, use our secondary hero's movement uh, to go this way, one, two, and three. And that is it, okay? Uh, so that was a pretty quick round, uh, just once again exploring, roaming the area. Uh, seeing what we can find before the round ends. I want to use my view air uh, to gain another three gold and uh, I want to use my population token now that I build um, Now that I built that let me see if I can build um, Okay, so I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to have um, My secondary hero take care of the charging enemy hero army that's gonna arrive on round eight, okay? I'm not gonna be able to use my cards in my hand for that, all right? Uh, that's the only problem. So um, I'll flip my population token, okay? And uh, I'll gain, um, I'll, uh, let's see, so it's gonna cost me eight to flip these two uh, people, okay? So it's gonna cost me eight gold, so that's eight, all right? Eight gold. Uh, and uh, I also, while I'm recruiting, let me recruit, uh, this is gonna cost me 12. So this is the champions, it's gonna cost me 12. So I'm gonna spend uh, 10 and two, okay. Oops, uh, that's my champions right there, all right. So I have a pretty big army. I think I should be able to take care of uh, the enemy, um, uh, the enemy army without even cards in my hand. That way my primary hero can focus and go towards the uh, Dragon Utopia, but uh, I don't really have anything else to do this round. Uh, I've built, I've uh, populated, so now we're gonna move on to round um, round eight. Okay, and this time it's an astrologer's round, uh, so we're gonna trigger the event. So uh, according to scenario instructions, uh, once you reach round eight, okay, uh, if the uh, first charging hero's army has been defeated, place the second charging hero's army on the rightmost blocked field. And in this case, that's gonna be uh, here. Okay, the guy is gonna be placed here, and uh, they'll move after me at the end of the round. So uh, let's uh, now proceed to uh, the uh, astrologer's predict. Let's see. Um, and uh, also, of course, uh, that uh, we don't we no longer have the extra movement points. Before I forget, now that you know we're talking about astrologers predict or proclaim, um, uh, yeah, want to make sure I don't do movement until the next uh, astrologers round. Each hero suffers minus one movement. Wow, well you look at that. So uh, now we have minus one movement points. That sucks. Um, so there's that. Uh, and now, uh, now. Uh, we flip the few movement uh, points uh, we have left. 
uh, for my secondary hero and my primary hero, and um, we didn't use any expert effects last time. Uh, we flip these tokens, and now we look at our hand and uh, see if I want to discard anything. This hand is pretty good, uh, so now um, and now I I'll I'll go ahead and uh, just skip it. Uh, so um, uh, now, what do I want to do this turn? Not really a whole lot I can do because of the hindered movement, uh, honestly. So um, since I'm not gonna be able to, uh, you know, I don't want the enemy hero to, um, I don't want the enemy hero to capture these uh, fields. Uh, so uh, I'll just move my secondary hero in this direction um, so that I can capture that later. And I might as well bait the enemy hero since I can't, uh, you know, I can't. Uh, thanks to this astrologer's predict card, I, I can't go with the plan I had originally. So uh, I'll just move in this direction, and that way I bait the enemy hero into attacking me. Um, I am not going to flip my population tokens or anything, or build anything. Not really a whole lot I can do, uh, so we're just going to have the enemy hero attack now. So on their turn, if the, if the enemy hero is within, uh, if my hero is within the same tile as the enemy hero, they'll always try to attack me, so enemy hero moves in my direction and it'll attack me, and now combat will begin. And it's the same configuration as the previous army, it's a charger's army. Uh, so uh, I already showed you what that was last time. Uh, uh, the enemy didn't even get a chance to draw from the deck. So we're going to set this up. That's the uh, AI cards. That's the uh, spell cards. And um, there's also the uh, AI army. I'll set that up in a second. Uh, but let me set up my army first. Let's see what I want to bring to combat. Okay, and that's what I want to bring to combat. That's how I'm going to arrange it. And just like last time, it's the same configuration as I mentioned uh, so we're now gonna uh, fight against that uh, so highest um, uh, highest um, uh, um, initiative is the vampires and uh, before I start uh, let's uh, just just once again cast a chain lighting and I'm gonna do a um, I'm gonna do a um, expert effect on that and uh, I'm going to target the Mantic Cores, and the two adjacent units to it uh, are going to get a, uh, a one damage sap. Okay, so zip, zip, zip. Okay, there we go. Uh, so uh, now, because I cast Expert Knowledge, this goes to my hand, and I can uh, I have my spell limit increased by one. Now, I do want to save that Chain Lighting for later, to be honest. Uh, it's pretty powerful, so... Uh, I want to save it for the last combat. Hopefully, it'll be a few rounds from now, but that's okay. So uh, let's attack. Um, uh, let's attack uh, with the uh, initiative eight vampires, uh, and I'm gonna attack the uh, minotaurs. And uh, let's see. Uh, I want to. Uh, I want to attack them without. Uh, uh, without. Um, uh, without adding anything, uh, and it'll ignore retaliation, so that's zero. So that's uh, three damage uh, minus the two shield, so we flip this to a two side, and um, we put the activation token on him, and that's it. So now, uh, champions, uh, well, now we have number seven uh, for initiative. Now champions will attack Manticores. Uh, we're gonna, uh, if I get a, so that's a five, if I get a six, that would be perfect. Um, but you know what? Uh, why don't I just uh, why don't I just uh, uh, use the Crusaders? Let's give it a six. Let's give it, let's give it an edge to make sure the Manticores don't activate. Okay, so that's a minus one. I'm gonna use the leadership token to reroll that, please. Uh, okay, so that's a plus one. That's awesome. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's enough to. Uh, uh, and the Manticore, so that's uh, 7 minus the 1, yep, enough. So uh, champions uh, annihilate the Manticores. Uh, let's uh, put this in the faction cards. So that was the champions activation. And uh, now we move on to the next number 7 um, initiative, which is the Evil Eyes. The Evil Eyes will try attacking 
um, the salads, okay? Uh, so it can't, uh, it, it focuses on range units, first lower, then um, first them of their own category, then lower, then higher. Uh, so it'll, uh, and in case of ties, I can choose. So it'll attack the salads and uh, there's no penalty, okay? Because uh, it's not on the back row. So minus one, so that's, uh, and then minus the one shield. There we go, okay? Oh, and So now the evil eyes will activate and uh, I need to draw a card from the AI deck to see what it does. Uh, so put this card on the unit uh, that is to activate next. In this case, it's the evil eyes. So we're gonna uh, roll and attack the salads because uh, it'll try to attack uh, ranged units uh, first and they're tied. Uh, so I can, I'll just have it attack the salads. Okay, so that's zero. So that's three minus the one shield, uh, so that's two damage, okay? And that was the activation of the evil eyes. Um, there we go, so that's number seven. Now there's a couple more number seven activations that I can do. Uh, so let's have these salads attack, uh, actually. Um, yeah, let's have the, uh, let's have the liches attack the evil eyes uh, first, so. Uh, let's, uh, there's no adjacent units to the evil eyes, so I'm not going to be able to really take advantage of that. So let's just attack the evil eyes. Let's see. Uh, do I want to boost it? Not really. Let's just um, plus one. So that's uh, four damage. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's that de extra defense uh, from the card that the AI played. Uh, so that's four damage uh, minus, because uh, we're playing on expert or hard. Uh, minus three, so that's one. Uh, so we just flip this token and then this defense card uh, goes away, okay? Uh, and now that was the activation of the liches. The ability doesn't uh, uh, count this time because uh, because there's no adjacent units. Uh, so now we move on to uh, the salads. The salads will attack the... Um, let's try to attack the minotaurs. So the minotaurs... Uh, well, uh, I just want to make sure that they're gone uh, for good, so uh, I don't want them. I don't want them to even act. So that's four damage. Uh, I'm not gonna boost it. Uh, let's see. So that's zero, and uh, so that's uh, four damage minus the two. So the minotaurs are gone. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, and now I could activate the. Uh, I, I could activate those Crusaders, but uh, they're not going to reach them in time anyway, so I'm just going to move them over here. And now uh, we move on to the new round. Because it's a hero combat, I don't have to spend points, so uh, I can just start a new round. We remove the activation uh, cubes from... Uh, we remove the activation cubes from the units, and we start w once again. So now highest... Um, this is the highest... Um, initiative which is the vampires and we attack the evil eyes uh, so we roll so that's plus one so that's four minus one so that's three uh, there's one health left and then um, two here okay all right and then uh, we're gonna have the champions move in roll and that's enough okay so uh, we've now uh, completed combat against the two charging armies let's go ahead and reset the board and then we'll return to the map Okay, so we remove the enemy hero uh, miniature and uh, we don't have any more movement points left. Uh, so that pretty much brings us to the end of round eight. Let's now move on to round nine. Okay, so now we start round nine. Uh, let's move the round cube and uh, we go through our round steps. This time it's a resource round. Uh, so uh, let's begin with the uh, building bonuses. Uh, I think I would like to have um, uh, gold. Do I want gold or movement? Um, I'm kind of running short on movement. Let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, um, I don't want to be at risk of not reaching uh, the location on time. So why don't we just get an extra movement point for this round for my main hero, okay, uh, from the city hall. And then uh, I'm going to get a, a leadership, um, not, not leadership, morale token. Uh, and now we move on to um, standard resource uh, income. So 20 gold, 
uh, for building materials and uh, one valuable. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna return my um, expert token. Uh, looks like that's it. Let's flip our other um, our movement tokens. And uh, now uh, I'm gonna start by doing the following. So, oh, and also, of course, let's not forget uh, my hand. So this is what I have in hand right now. Uh, so I, uh, my hand limit currently is five. I'm gonna draw up to five. Uh, one, two, okay. And this is my hand currently, okay. All right, so I have, um, uh, I have the one movement point from my um, my uh, secondary hero, uh, but uh, let's see what I have on the top of my Discord pile here. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure I want to do the following. So let's uh, use these three movement points from my main hero to move one, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna move into this location. And what this location allows me to do is look at the top three cards of my discard pile and put one of them in my hand. I'm gonna move view air back to my hand, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and cast that now, okay? So view air and I'll gain three resources. Um, definitely wanna do that. And uh, I'm gonna move with my secondary hero. I'm gonna move to this location uh, this is uh, a stable, which gives me another movement point, which I'll go ahead and give to the um, I'll go ahead and give to the secondary hero. Now I want to take advantage of that because uh, with champions uh, I can proceed to um, reinforce it at a reduced cost uh, while um, uh, while my hero is on a uh, stable. All right, so I'll go ahead and flip my population token. And then I need to pay, uh, in this case, for 14 instead of 20. Uh, so let's uh, bring in, uh, let's take out 16 from here. Okay, so that's 16, return 2. And uh, that gives me, um, that gives me uh, 16, uh, that gives me one more uh, valuable uh, that I need to pay. Uh, well, I need to, I need to pay one more valuable, that is, uh, and I flip this to its, um, I flip this to its uh, reinforced side. Uh, so that is my use of, um, that is my use of the um, population token. And uh, now I have one extra movement point, uh, which I think that what I'll do is, uh, maybe I want to buy a war machine with that money. Um, I do have fire magic, but with chain lighting, it's, it hasn't been as useful as I was hoping. Uh, so um, let's see. I can go to a trading post and spending on a war machine. Okay, yeah. So I'll do that. I'll move my um, uh, my secondary hero to the trading post, and I'll look at my uh, I'll look at the uh, war machines uh, deck or or siege engines or whatever they're called. So the cost to buy it from a trading post is 10, so I'll spend 10, uh, in this case for the Ballista, and I have a Ballista now, okay? Uh, now, this is a permanent card, and I can only have one permanent card at a time, so I'll just go ahead and discard Fire Magic, I'll just try to uh, get rid of it later. Uh, but now Ballista is part of, uh, you know, my, the stuff that I put in play now. It doesn't occupy a space or anything, it's just like a permanent card like any other. And uh, it'll give me that effect at the beginning of each round. So now I have a ballista, which is cool. I'll put it here and uh, I'll put the war machines back. So that was a pretty simple round. And now finally we can get rid of this curse and I can get my, um, I can get my um, movement points back. Uh, so let's uh, put this here uh, for next round. So now we move on to round 10. So we move the cube to round 10, and uh, now I have until round 13 to finish this, so I need to hurry. Uh, so we start with the round steps. Um, let's see, We uh, there's no timed events. Uh, there's an astrologer spread it round, so let's uh, flip another astrologer spread it card. Each player immediately gains one, um, uh, one 
uh, uh, morale token. Now, do I want to use my morale token before we start? Um, sure, why not? Uh, let's uh, use the morale token to uh, just discard uh, and draw. So I'll discard um, I'll discard defense and I'll draw one more card. Okay, there we go. So that's another attack card, and that is my hand currently. And I gain my other morale token. There you go. Um, so now I can uh, just discard this. I don't have to worry about any other persisting effects. Let's flip all of our tokens. Okay. Okay. And now we begin a new round. Uh, so let's move with our main hero uh, exploring this style. Uh, and we have a level four uh, place. Uh, I think I can actually, uh, I'll just go ahead and use this three to level up. Uh, let's do it like this uh, so that I can conquer, um, so that I can conquer that. Um, I can conquer this without having to worry about, um, without having to worry about, um, uh, without having to worry about, um, you know, do, uh, so I can do quick combat here. Uh, and so that's one movement point to explore. So yeah, I'll spend another movement point to move to the Tree of Knowledge, and I'm gonna spend three valuables, because uh, I'm actually, you know, I, I'm, I keep burning through all my gold. So I'm gonna spend three valuables to uh, gain, to gain two experience points. So I'm gonna go here to uh, my hero board, so that's one and two, and that makes me level up. So we refer to our leveling up chart, so that's five. My hand limit increases to six, and I search to the ability deck. Uh, and there's sorcery, which we saw earlier. Not interested, so let's look at the top two and see if I find something else that um, uh, I could use. Uh, Eagle Eye, Scouting. Um, yeah, um, I'll go ahead and take Scouting, because uh, I'm going to be searching for spells later, and this might come in handy. Uh, so I'll put Eagle Eye on top. This goes to my hand. And uh, let me put my visited cube here. And I forgot to put my visited cube here for this uh, stable location. Um, and now that I am level five, uh, I can also uh, just um, uh, I can uh, visit this and not have to worry. Now I have to be careful because I only have about uh, I have about um, three, four, four. four uh, I have 11 movement points, one, two, three, four, five. I, I think I'm good on movement points, so I'm gonna try to explore everything a bit thoroughly. So let's uh, use another movement point here to um, move here, and uh, I'll gain uh, I'll gain a couple of um, I'll gain a couple of artifacts. Now it'll take me to gain a uh, it'll tell me to gain a uh, two negative morale tokens. So because I have a, a positive morale token, that basically uh, means that I end up with a negative morale token. So positive, uh, one negative morale, uh, I lose the positive, and one negative morale, I now have a negative morale token. If I were to gain another negative morale, I will have to discard my hand, that would be really bad. So don't want that to happen, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll, you know, uh, I'll solve that in a second, we'll gain some extra morale. Now let's uh, do a uh, quick combat here, uh, and Let's um, uh, let's do uh, two. Let's uh, search the artifact deck uh, twice. Let's see. So we have Spellbinder's Hat. Uh, remove one card from your hand. Search two cards deck. Uh huh. Maybe I do want that. Uh, that way I can get rid of um, things that I don't like. I'll go ahead and keep the Spellbinder's Hat. That's gonna be one of my searches. And then we're gonna look two, uh, the top two. Let's see. Uh, if a player. Uh, if played at the start of combat, the enemy hero can neither retreat nor surrender, draw two cards and choose one. Yeah, let's do Shackles of War, okay. Uh, that way I can filter through my, sift through my deck. Okay, excellent, not bad at all. Uh, so uh, I have two movement points left. Uh, I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna use two with uh, the uh, secondary hero move over here. And uh, I'm gonna want to, um, I'm gonna want to take control of these couple areas in a second, uh, but that's around uh, that's round ten. Uh, moving along briskly, just exploring, no combat. Uh, so that's it. Uh, moving on to round eleven. So we move the round cube 
uh, we now uh, start a new resource round. Uh, do I want a gold or a movement? Let's see, one, two, three. Um, I have to explore um, uh, gold. Gold, I might have to trade to get some things done, but um, uh, we'll see. Um, I think I'll, I'll just, I'm just gonna keep it safe and make sure that I have enough movement points to do what I need to do. So let's just do the movement points uh, and let's um, uh, let's do our resource round. So I'll gain a movement point from that uh, and I'll gain a morale token, which gets rid of the negative morale, okay? Um, so now resource, I gain 20 gold, um, okay? And then I gain uh, four valuables, so that's four. Uh, and finally, I'm gonna gain. Um, I'm gonna gain. Uh, uh, sorry, four four building materials and then one valuable. So that's the resource step. Uh, and now uh, I get to my hand. So um, let's see. So I I'm gonna keep. Um, I'm gonna keep this. Um, I think I can discard uh, these two. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna keep. Uh, this, discard this, um, discard this for now. Um, so I want to keep this, 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 okay, and discard these. And uh, my hand limit is six now, so I can keep one more, uh, five. Let's keep one attack card, discard the rest, okay? All right, so I'm going to keep these, and um, uh, now we, uh, we flip our movement point. We have our expert tokens, no timed events, and now we begin uh, a new round. Okay, so first I want to um, gain a spell from my secondary hero here, and uh, let's look at the spells. So I'm not interested in disrupting Ray for now. Let's look at the top two. We have Fire Shield, remove your hero to a selected town or settlement in your control, and um, nah, none of this uh, really does anything. But that's fine because we're going to use Scout to see if we can find better cards. Um, yeah, but that relies in even leaving, letting the enemy attack. I'd rather not, uh, but fine. Uh, we'll keep this. Okay, so we're going to keep this. We're going to put a visited uh, cube here. And uh, now I want to do the following. So I'm going to do Spellbinder's Head, and I'm going to remove... Um, I'm going to remove Fire Shield, and I'm going to remove Fire Shield, but um, I'm going to do an expert effect to search five, okay? Uh, so we're going to search five the spell deck and see if we find something useful, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, Frenzy. Um, yeah, Frenzy could be pretty good, uh, so I'm going to uh, keep that, and uh, this uh, goes to the discard pile. Let's put a magic arrow, um, and uh, this goes to the discard pile. This is uh, removed. Uh, I'm just going to put it to the back here, uh, and this goes to the discard pile. Um, okay, and now uh, this goes to my hand. Uh, so, okay, uh, now uh, that I'll, um, I'll move, uh, I don't know that I'll need that and I want to be able to do this trading post in a couple of turns. So let's move the hero on in this direction. We already have, um, let's see, how many valuables do we have for the uh, Archangels? I'm just going to need three to up upgrade them. Um, yeah, it looks like we do have plenty of uh, valuables. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna just move move them in this direction. And now, uh, which is hard, um, I'm gonna draw two uh, and choose on this card. Uh, uh, choose one card and this uh, card the other. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna shuffle my uh, deck because uh, my this card pile is already empty. And um, sorry, my draw pile is empty. So I draw two and this card the other. Cool. So this goes on my um, discard pile. So I'm already accruing some really cool cards here for later. And uh, now uh, I want to um, I want to use these movement points to start moving in this direction. So um, I'm gonna move here. Now um, I'll go ahead and do the witch's hot effect and see. Uh, I'm gonna choose the second option. I look at the top and see if I want to do it or not. And um, hmm, drawing and boosting a spell, um, sure, uh, sure. Let's let's uh, do that. Why not? Uh, drawing cards, not bad. Um, and now, 
um, I'm gonna so that's one uh, let's put the visitor token on this and now let's visit this that's just a sanctuary not really planning to do anything else there let's explore let's see how we want to do this um, I just want to avoid combat but a goal doesn't sound bad uh, I just need one more experience point uh, and I could um, I could reach three uh, expert effects um, uh, which doesn't sound bad uh, but I really really would rather avoid combat if possible so at level 5 we have uh, level 5 yeah I just don't want to face uh, gold units right now that uh, I just don't want to uh, ruin my army as it is so uh, obelisks do give me uh, two valuables uh, according to scenario instructions so I'm okay with that uh, let's uh, put it like um, let's make it look like this um, there we go okay let's put it like that and I do have one more movement point left so I'm gonna move here and gain the three gold okay so round 12 is gonna be an astrologer's round we move the round cube to round 12 and um, let's start by drawing an astrologer's card let's see what happens uh, let's see so uh, friendly beaver uh, if you draw a card on the first astrologer's round discard it and draw another card immediately remove all black cubes from all locations in the map if you draw this card on the f oh, okay I see all right uh, remove all black cubes from all locations on the map wow okay um, all right sure um, yeah I, I, I know that cards um, I've drawn it a couple times before I completely forgot um, I'll see if I can benefit uh, from this uh, for sure uh, so let's remove all of those okay cool uh, we'll see if we can do something with that um, uh, all right and um, we put this in the discord file that's neat and um, and now uh, we flip these tokens and um, flip these tokens uh, that oh there's another black cube here that I didn't see uh, and yeah now we go to my hand do I want to discard anything um, not really uh, let's put this over here uh, I think uh, I like my hand I think I'll be able to um, I'll be able to just this is a good starter for when I assault the, uh, the uh, enemy uh, dragon utopia so now I have a couple of um, I have a couple of uh, locations here. Let's see. Um, now I need for the angels. I need fifty gold. Uh, let's see if I can produce that. Um, okay. So here's what I'll do. I'll move. Uh, I'll move the secondary hero this way. Um, I'll gain three gold. Uh, I'll move. I'll put this uh, token here, and uh, I'll. Uh, I'll use the other movement point to go in this direction. I just want to end up in that trading post for the final round. Um, I want to, uh, I don't have a, an extra movement point for this round, uh, so I'll put this away. Uh, and I'll use, um, let's see, I'll, um, I'll gain the two valuables, okay, uh, from the obelisk. Okay, that's as per scenario instructions and uh, I just realized that uh, when I first defeated when I defeated the second charging heroes army I forgot to gain my two um, my two valuables so I'll go ahead and add that there let's just learn a spell let's see if we find something interesting if not we'll just discard it that's okay uh, one two uh, so yeah I spend the movement point fly during this turn your hero can move through blocked fields but cannot end their movement there um, Hmm. Okay, but I do gain a couple movement points. That can be useful, actually. Uh, so, uh, I do have the expert effect, so uh, let's put this here. Maybe I can use this this turn. Uh, we'll find out in a second. Um, uh, but uh, I can gain an extra movement point. Well, first, before I gain another movement point, let's reveal this. Let's put a visited cube here. And uh, we reveal this. Uh, so this is a Dragon Utopia, finally. Okay, so I'm going to position it like that so that I'm able to gain a couple extra artifacts for that last fight, okay? Um, so I don't have any more movement points left. Uh, I don't really want to flip any other tokens, uh, so we're now going to move on to the final round, round 13. Okay, we move the, um, the uh, round token to round 13, and uh, let's... Um, 
uh, let's start with the uh, bonuses. So we have, uh, uh, I don't think I'm going to need three movement points, uh, so an extra movement point for my main hero. I'll be able to reach that just fine. Uh, so now, uh, instead, I'm going to gain uh, the five gold. So that's 25 gold in total. Okay, so I'm going to use um, 25. Okay, there we go. All right, 25 gold. All right, and um, I gain a uh, morale, uh, positive morale token. Okay. Um, now uh, we flip these, uh, and uh, this looks good over here. We flip these. Um, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, oh, and now our hand. So I have a hand limit of six. Uh, fly didn't end up being useful. Uh, that's quite all right. Uh, let's just uh, discard it. Uh, and now we can uh, start. Uh, we can start um, preparing for that last fight. Uh, so uh, let's see how much gold we have. Okay, so we have more than enough gold, um, uh, and that's uh, great because I want to be able to recruit my archangels and then flip them. So to do that, I'm gonna need fifty gold and three valuables. I almost forgot uh, the four uh, building materials and. Um, four building materials and one valuable. Okay, so now uh, I have more than enough materials to recruit my archangels and flip them. I'm gonna need 50 gold and three valuables in total. So I flip my population token and uh, I, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and spend 50 gold. So we got 40 gold and then this is 12, okay? So that's 52. Uh, so I'm gonna spend all of this, all right? And return two. Okay, and spend three valuables. So there we go, uh, three valuables. And uh, now I can recruit my archangels and also flip them uh, or recruit them, right? No, sorry, uh, reinforce them. So I have a full army now. And uh, now I also want to, um, I also want to um, use these two movement points uh, because uh, I, uh, I want to build that mage guild, okay, uh, for my last round. So I'm gonna build that mage guild. Uh, let's move to um, let's move to the leprechaun here and just gain the two gold I need, okay. And I'll flip my uh, I'll flip my uh, build token in a second. Uh, so that's the eight gold there. But uh, let's put this visit token. And uh, now let's also do this. Let's visit this field. Uh, so that I gain a couple artifacts. So I'll gain one negative morale. It takes away my positive morale. And then uh, the other negative morale and up like this. Okay, so now I have negative morale currently. We're gonna put a visited token there. And I'm gonna gain, I'm gonna search artifacts uh, times two. So one, let's see. Uh, oops, so that's uh, one, uh, the first one. Uh, definitely this, we got rid of that. And then we look at the other two, okay. Uh, let's see, for this combat, your selected unit gains uh, plus one initiative. For this combat, neither player can use, yeah, definitely the ring, okay. Uh, and we are gonna put that on the top. So now we have a couple extra cards in hand that we can use for this combat. And um, last couple preparations, uh, let's flip our build token to uh, use the eight gold. Okay, so that's four, four, uh, actually, I don't need gold. I got confused. Uh, I thought it was eight gold, not even. All right, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Uh, so uh, let's just use four uh, and then two uh, to build uh, the mage guild. And that's the last building. So the mage guild will allow me to, uh, so when I build it, I can search two uh, twice. Okay. So uh, let's search to the spell deck and let's see if we can find something useful. Actually, before I do that, uh, well, I already, I already saw that too late. That's fine. Uh, misfortune and sorrow play immediately when the selected enemy is attacking. Negate the attack die result or an additional attack from that die. Um, okay, sure. Uh, oh, I can skip a unit's activation, but that requires a lot of spell power though. Um, uh, hmm. Um, okay, uh, let's just use misfortune. That requires a bit less, um, a bit less, uh, and we look at another two. 
thrust ring. Target a space on the combat board and two units adjacent to that space. Uh, that sounds uh, pretty powerful, so let's uh, go ahead and get a thrust ring. Okay, so that's a pretty potent hand that I have, uh, and I feel like I'm pretty ready. Um, I don't think I, there's anything else I can do uh, that'll uh, improve my chances. Uh, let me just double check. Oh, and actually, there is one other thing I can do, because I removed the cubes from here earlier. Uh, I'm going to move here. Uh, we're going to uh, roll two treasure dice and see if I pick one. Artifact, we'll just grab another artifact to my hand. Uh, pretty sure I'm gonna grab that, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, when this card of the enemy cuts a spell. Okay, yeah, uh, Dragon Shield scale goes to my hand. Uh, and now I use this other movement point to go here, uh, visited field, uh, and I just gain another spell. Uh, okay, so let's see Fireball, uh, Town Portal. Um, yep, uh, Fireball it is. Okay, um, all right, and now uh, we uh, attack the enemy. Okay, so I've uh, arranged my lineup of units and I've prepared the um, AI deck and the spell deck as per scenario instructions. And now we're gonna add the enemy army. Okay, so we have the pack of black dragons, uh, the uh, manticores, pack of manticores, pack of minotaurs, and pack of medusas. And uh, one last uh, well, one lo look at my hand before uh, we begin. Uh, so uh, plenty of here to work with. Uh, let's draw, um, let's start with leadership. I'm gonna use a expert effect to gain a morale token which gets rid of the negative morale. And I'm gonna draw two cards. One, two. Okay, there you go. Uh, and now uh, the highest initiative is Archangels. So we're gonna start by activating Archangels and let's see. Oh, and also, uh, this is the this is um, an ability card that the enemy, uh, as per scenario instructions, the enemy has to have nearby for and use when instructed. And this is my um, Siege Engine card. Uh, so uh, it has an effect at the beginning of each combat round, the one damage to the enemy unit with the lowest um, initiative. Uh, so that would be the Medusas. Okay, so I definitely don't want the Black Dragon to even activate if possible, uh, but we'll see. So uh, I'll move the Archangels to attack the Black Dragons, but uh, before I, um, before I, um, you know, uh, let anything happen, uh, I just want to cast this uh, Fireball spell. Uh, and let's go ahead and give it some spell power. Uh, so uh, let's give it plus one spell power and I'll draw a card. Uh, and I don't think I'm gonna be casting that magic arrow. So that's two spell power. And then um, let's make it three and four uh, at that point. Okay, so that's four spell power. And uh, that's gonna be three damage on the two adjacent, uh, the two adjacent spaces. So uh, three and three, okay. Uh, let's see. Three and three, uh, so that's the start. Uh, so I discard all of these to give it that much spell power, uh, and I didn't use the expert effect on this. Okay, uh, so this goes to my discard pile. Uh, so that's my spell for the round, uh, and now I need to try and deal a whole bunch of damage to that. Uh, let's start by um, uh, let's start by. Uh, discarding, uh, we're gonna play Black uh, Shard of the Dead Knight, uh, and let's discard. Um, uh, let's discard this, uh, which if if I discard a spell, I draw a card. Okay, so I draw spell power. Okay, uh, so that's uh, well, just so that I keep track of it. Uh, so that's two damage, and. Um, Let's do another two. Let's add Ring of the Wayfarer to uh, Salads, okay? Uh, so that they gain one plus initiative. Uh, so yeah, okay, now we we'll go ahead and roll the die. So 11 damage. Okay, zero, perfect. So now with that, uh, so that's 11 minus uh, the shield and damage, dragon flips, uh, and uh, now the dragon retaliates, okay? so. Uh, we um, uh, put a activation token and a retaliate token, and we roll retaliate for the dragon. 
So that's zero minus the three. Uh, so um, the angel takes uh, three. Okay. So that's the first activation. Now we move on to eleven. That's the next uh, two highest activation, and uh, we're gonna start with the black dragon, I suppose. Uh, so uh, let's uh, attack. Uh, so we, we draw an AI card. Okay. You say skill. So you say skill as described in the scenario. Uh, expert, as if the first combat round, shuffle this card and back into the AI deck. As if, if it is the first combat round, shuffle this card back into the AI deck. Okay, uh, alright. Uh, so uh, we draw. Okay, so uh, what that does is it gives plus one armor. So the dragon will have plus one armor for uh, their next, uh, for when they get attacked again. And I'm just gonna put this uh, as a reminder here for the dragon. That's gonna be for when the uh, angel, when the angel re retaliates, um, uh, the dragon will have one extra armor. Now, normally, um, I think that when the AI is instructed to draw a card, you're supposed to draw a card from the AI deck. Uh, but because of that card that I just played, it might get caught in a loop where it keeps giving it armor over and over and over. Uh, you know, if I keep drawing that card. So I don't know if that was intended. So for now, I'm not gonna draw a card. Uh, I'm gonna have to check later on that. That's a bit strange. I haven't run into this uh, before. So now the black dragon will just go ahead and attack and it just has a plus one shield for the retaliation. Uh, there, zero. So that's six um, minus uh, three. Uh, so the uh, Archangel now has six damage. So one, there you go, six. Uh, all right, great. So now the Archangel gets to retaliate. So I'm gonna put a uh, activation and retaliation token. So we, we roll for the Archangel, plus one. So that's eight minus three, that's five. Oh, and I forgot about the one armor. So that's actually four. Okay. Uh, so armor goes away uh, for now. Uh, you know, if, if we draw that card again, uh, we'll... Um, uh, we'll, if we draw that card again, we'll, uh, we'll just uh, apply the bonus again. So that was 11. Uh, now, um, I don't have an 11, uh, so now the Manticores get to activate. Uh, the Manticores will try attacking uh, characters of their own um, tier level. The closest one is Archangels, so it'll attack the Archangels. And, uh, of course, we draw an AI card. Uh, let's see. Skill. Uh, so uh, the our, the Manticores get um get a plus one uh, shield, and once again because we're playing on expert, it says to shuffle this back into the AI deck if it's the first round. So uh, we shuffle. Okay, uh, there we go. And now the Manticores attack. Okay, so that's uh, zero. So that's five damage minus the three. Uh, so now this becomes uh, three uh, damage, okay? There we go. Now I actually just realized that Manticore has an ability that um, that um, ignores the unit's uh, shield, okay? So um, it basically takes another three damage. Uh, so uh, that brings it to this, and then we put one, uh, one uh, damage on the Archangel like that. Okay, uh, now uh, the Manticore attack, and now we move on to um, uh, Nine Initiative. So I'm gonna move my um, man, uh, my champions to attack the Manticore, and uh, th if this unit's movement ends in a space other than where it started, you may reroll an attack die. Uh, so I'm gonna attack the Manticore, and the Manticore does have one extra shield, um, so we're gonna attack it, and I get to re-roll it. Okay, zero, so that's six minus two. Uh, so now we flip the Manticore, okay? Six minus two, so that's uh, six minus two, so that's four. Uh, so we just put one damage on the other side, okay? Okay, and the bonus from Armorer is gone. And uh, now Manticore has been flipped. Now the Manticore gets to retaliate. Okay, uh, so the Manticore acted earlier. Now it gets to retaliate. Uh, so let's see. So that's minus one, so that's four minus two. So the um, 
the champions take two. Okay, uh, so that was the champions activation. So we went uh, 11, uh, now 9, and now we have 8. Uh, so 8, we have uh, salads and uh, minotaurs. Uh, so uh, I go first since I'm the attacker, and I want to. Um, I don't want the Minotaurs dealing 5 damage against my Zealots, because uh, if they get a bonus and then they roll, that is going to be bad. Um, I think the Manticores, my champion, should be able to take care of them later. So uh, the Minotaur, I'm going to uh, attack it with the Zealots. Uh, I'm not going to boost it uh, yet, so let's uh, roll. So that's a minus 1. So that's 3 against the 1 armor, uh, against the 2 armor, that is. Uh, and we flip it, and there's no damage carry over. Okay? Um, uh, okay, and that wasn't bad, and now the, at least the Minotaurs will do a bit less damage, and actually I also ruined their uh, initiative. So that was uh, 8, now we move on to 7. Uh, so 7, uh, we have uh, Liches. Now, uh, I think that what I'll do with Liches is uh, I'll attack uh, the... Um, I'll attack the Medusas, and the Medusas have um, the Medusas have uh, only one shield, so uh, this shouldn't be too terrible. Let's roll two, and again because they're all the way uh, all the way back there, uh, I only uh, I roll two and I choose the worst result. Okay, so zero. So that's three damage minus the one shield. Uh, they take two. Okay. And that was my Lich's activation. Now, I could attack the Black Dragons, but, uh, you know, don't forget the effect that the Liches have. But it's just two damage. Even if I roll plus uh, one, it, it won't do any damage. So I'm not going to bother. Um, so that's the Liches. So that's seven, uh, eight, seven, now six. Now six, we have the um, Crusaders, Minotaurs, and Medusas. Uh, so the Crusaders are just going to have to attack. There's really nowhere to move. Um, so the Crusaders are going to attack. I could have moved with the Salads, but that's fine. Too late. So uh, I just attack with um, the Crusaders at the Manticore. Uh, so let's roll. Um, and they already retaliated, which is great. Uh, so the Crusaders are, are not going to get uh, punished. Okay, so that's minus one. So that's three uh, minus... Um, uh, so that's four minus two. Yeah, so the Manticores take uh, two damage. Okay. All right, and uh, that's the uh, Crusader's activation. And now we move on to the enemy. Uh, they get to activate both their, uh, both of their, uh, both of their um, uh, units. So we start with uh, the highest. They're the same. Tier, so let's just start with the Minotaur. So we're gonna play an AI card. So now the Minotaurs will gain a um, they'll gain a shield uh, bonus, probably for a retaliation attack. We shuffle the AI deck, and they'll try attacking a unit of their same tier. So they're gonna move over here, and let's just put this here already, and let's pay attention to their attack ability. If you resolve a minus one on the attack uh, die, draw a card. Let's see. So we don't resolve the um, Minotaur ability, and um, that's four damage minus the one shield. Uh, so that's uh, three damage, okay, on the Zealots. And now the Zealots get to retaliate and ignore combat penalties against adjacent units. So I don't have to do a combat penalty from adjacency. So we are now put a retaliation token on this guy. We roll. Okay, so that's minus one. Uh, so that's three minus the one armor. Okay. Oh, actually, uh, there's two armor. So that's three armor, three. Um, do I want to re-roll that? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's fine. So uh, we just... Um, we just don't do any damage. That's fine. Uh, we now discard this. Um, okay. So now uh, we move to the Medusas. Medusas will try attacking uh, other ranged units. Uh, in this case, the Salads. Uh, we draw a card. So Medusas will gain plus two defense. Okay. Uh, and that's for their next attack. Uh, and um, we roll one a die against the salads. Now, do uh, you want to use anything in my hand? No, not really. So we roll. 
So that's plus one, so that's five minus one damage, uh, so that's four total. Uh, so uh, we now move here, and there's two damage on the salads here, okay? And we put a activation token on the Medusa, um, and uh, the Medusa has that plus two, uh, the Medusa has that plus two, um, plus two defense. Uh, so that is uh, it for this round. Uh, we now move on to the next round, so we remove uh, these uh, shield uh, tokens, okay? Right, and um, we remove these shield uh, tokens, uh, not shield, uh, activation tokens and retaliation tokens. Okay. All right. And now we start a new round. Okay, so the angel has the highest initiative, so we're gonna begin with that. And let's also not, for, not forget the ballista effect. So um, at the beginning of each combat round, the one damage to the enemy unit with the lowest um, with the lowest initiative. Uh, now the Medusa and the Minotaurs have the same initiative, but I'm gonna choose to deal it to the Medusas. So now they go down to that. Um, now I want to attack with the Archangels. Uh, I want to attack the dragons. Uh, we're gonna do uh, plus two, uh, and this time it's gonna be an expert effect uh, on the dragons. So that's eight minus three. Uh, that should take care of it, uh, even with a minus one. Uh, so if I roll the minus one, uh, seven minus three. Yep, even that should be fine. Uh, so that's eight damage. Uh, the dragons should not retaliate. Hopefully. Uh, so if I got everything correct. Uh, okay, plus one, yep, that's more than enough. So that's nine minus three, that takes care of the dragon, okay? Uh, and uh, this now goes away. Uh, and that's the activation token for the Archangels. We move on to initiative, uh, the next highest one, this goes to the discard pile. The next in highest initiative is nine. Uh, let's see, so yeah, champions. Uh, I don't want the Manticores activating, so um, let's see, uh, I, I need to deal three damage. Uh, yeah, even with um, a minus one, this should take care of it. Uh, so champions activate the Manticores, and uh, I can also move uh, here to uh, reroll the, the die if I need to with the champion's ability. Okay, so that's six minus one, that takes care of the Manticore. Okay, there we go, and we put this over here, and uh, that is also another uh, activation uh, cube. Uh, so that's nine, and then we have uh, eight. Uh, eight is this, uh, actually, uh, Salads is six. Uh, it used to be eight. Now the next highest one is Liches. Um, uh, let's see, I, um, I'm gonna, um, yeah, I really don't wanna have to attack my own Salads, so I'll just attack the Medusas, that's fine. Uh, so there'll be a, a penalty. So minus, so that's uh, minus one against uh, the one armor. That's uh, or and the defense. Yeah. So no no damage. Okay, that goes away. Um, okay, and that was the lich's activation. No adjacent unit. Now we move on to six. Uh, so let's have the crusaders attack the uh, minotaurs. And um, if I roll high, uh, they should take care of it. Um, actually. Uh, yeah, you know, let's let's do that. Let's just risk it. What the heck? Uh, so let's just cast chain lighting. Uh, let's do one, uh, one, one. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna give plus one to the crusaders and attack the minotaurs with that. Okay, so that's minus one. But uh, if I use um, uh, shield of the Dwarven Lords, okay, I cancel that die effect, so that's four damage uh, minus uh, two, um, actually no, five damage minus uh, two, that's three, so that takes the Minotaurs out, okay, uh, all right, uh, we put this away, put this away, and um, now uh, we have uh, five, so that's six, five, so that leaves us with five. Uh, let's attack the Medusas. We have three damage uh, and we will just roll against them. Uh, so that's four minus the one damage. That's uh, three. Okay, uh, activated. 
Medusas will attack the Zealots. Uh, we draw a card. Defense. Draw a card. Uh, plus one. The Zealots are gone. Okay. Uh, discard this. And uh, that is it for this round. So we start a new round. And now the Angels hopefully will take care of that. Uh, I don't really have any more cards to play for my hand. Ballista will do one damage to the Medusa. Oh, actually, yeah, there you go. I don't, really, I don't really even have to do anything. The Ballista takes care of the Medusas. And um, yeah, so there you go, folks. That is it. Uh, that is the um, last scenario of the uh, Castle campaign uh, for Heroes of Mana Magic 3. Uh, this was a blast. Uh, thank you for watching uh, all of the playthroughs if you made it this far from the beginning. And if you have any comments, questions, feedback, make sure to put them in the comment section. And also don't forget to check the pinned comment that I'm going to leave for any corrections that other people might point out or that uh, I might uh, you know, learn after uh, afterwards. Okay, so um, again, make sure to check the uh, pinned comment and uh, that's it. Uh, like, subscribe, share. See you in the next one.